BevNet Live Summer 2017. My name is Ray Latif. I'm the managing editor of BevNet. How's everyone doing this morning? Awake? Alive? Well, this is going to be exciting. We, this is the uh, new beverage showdown semifinal round. We're going to kick things off with 12 really interesting emerging beverage brands that are coming onto the market. And uh, the new beverage showdown is uh, signature, the BevNet Live signature beverage brand competition. It's sponsored by Venturing and Emerging Brands, an operating unit of the Coca-Cola company. And the showdown gives 12 early stage and promising brands the opportunity to present their business plans and products to a panel of expert judges and the audience here at BevNet Live. The winner of the two-day competition will receive $10,000 in cash and prizes and join a short list of brands that have triumphed in the showdown, including HealthAid, Malk, Tio Gaspacho, Coco Cafe, Owl's Brew, and Grady's Cold Brew. Let's talk about the rules for a second. The rules for the semifinal round, each of the 12 brands are going to have two minutes to present and receive two minutes of immediate feedback from the judges. The judges already sampled the beverages earlier this morning. After all the brands are presented, the judges will pick five brands to move on to the final round, which takes place tomorrow. The sixth finalist will be chosen by audience vote. At the end of today's semifinal round, we're going to show a list of the participants and a number next to the brand name. Audience members in attendance and watching at home can vote by texting the number corresponding to their favorite brand to a phone number that we'll provide. So we're going to show that phone number at the end of the semifinal round. All right, let's meet our uh, esteemed panel of judges here. Starting to uh, my left, the first person over here is Mike Schneider. Mike Schneider is the CMO of BevNet. We have Zoe Feldman, who's the managing director of venture capital firm, Cleveland Avenue. We have Matthew Mitchell. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have Matt Jimenez, who's the senior category manager for grocery at Whole Foods. And of course, Matthew Mitchell, who's the VP of investments and ventures for venturing and emerging brands. All right, enough of me. Now to the semifinalists. First up, Rise Brewing, Jarrett McGovern and Grant Gajewski. All right, there you go. So you've got two mics, you can use the podium, and then this mic, your timer's right there. Oh, we can see it. Hey, I'm Jared McGovern. And I'm Grant Kajewski, and we're Rise Brewing Company. And we started Rise right here on the streets of New York City. We weren't satisfied with the current state of ready-to-drink coffee, and we wanted to make the best tasting coffee experience imaginable using the healthiest ingredients on the planet. We wanted to create a fresh, indulgent, latte-like experience without the cream, without the sugar, without the chemicals, without the fat, because people drink coffee every day, and you don't want to drink your calories. So we started brewing our cold brew in Jarrett's apartment, not too far from here, and we quickly outgrew that and moved to my garage. We now have our very own full-scale brewery. Our coffee is organic, it's fair trade, and sourced from the high mountains of Chanchamayo, Peru. It gave our coffee a sweet and chocolatey taste, but we wanted more. So we started brewing our coffee with nitrogen, and the results blew us away. Nitrogen gave us a cool cascade, it gave us a frothy head, a longer shelf life, and a consistently smooth taste. Most importantly, it gave us the healthy, delicious, latte-like experience we're looking for without the calories. Today alone, over 6,000 people will drink Rise Coffee, and over the next 12 months, we expect to serve 15 million cups of coffee. In an RTD market of over 400 million cups of coffee per day, we think that's just the tip of the iceberg. We're fueling some of the world's greatest minds inside some of the world's greatest companies like Facebook and Apple and ESPN. And we're fueling athletes too. Athletes every day are drinking Rise as an energy drink from Equinox to Juice Press to the Yankees Clubhouse. And most importantly, we're energized, motivated, and honored that people all around the world want to drink Rise coffee and it's our job to figure out how to get it to them. Thank you. Good job. All right, Rise Brewing. Uh, Matthew, first off, what do you think of the uh, presentation from uh, Jarrett and Grant? Uh, great. I mean, I love the, the product looks good. It uh, tastes great. Um, I think they've got a lot of stuff going. I think the nitro will be a real point of differentiation in a category that's getting very competitive. Yeah, indeed, a competitive category. Matt Jimenez, uh, cold brew sets huge, nitro and emerging segment. What do you think of the opportunities for Rise in that segment as a whole? Yeah, I would agree. I think the, the nitro aspect is definitely uh, a cutting edge piece. So I would, uh, I would definitely bet on that. Yeah. 
Mike Schneider, what do you think of the branding? What do you think of Rise and, and the brand itself, the, the package design? I think the branding's strong, and I think that um, you know, if Guinness sets the bar for Nitro, these guys pay it off. Um, the thing that's tough is the word Rise is hard to own, but I think they can. I think they can cut through. Yeah. So in terms of the uh, taste, and they talked about that latte, that like creamy profile and Rise. Did you get that? How do you feel about the formulation? Yeah, so I'm really interested in the food service aspect, which is their, you know, nitro in a keg. Um, I think that's a huge opportunity that's really a white space that they can really own if they, you know, sort of work and grind at it. Yeah, the food service aspect is pretty interesting. You know, from a VEB perspective, is that really important, Matt? Matthew, excuse me. Is, is what? I'm sorry? The food service aspect and the food service possibilities for a brand like Rice. Yeah, we're learning food service is becoming more and more important. Um, people are using that as a place to, to try new things. They're willing to experiment more than they would in, in terms of going to a store. But it's a really tough category, or t a tough channel to get into. It's hard to service. Um, it's critical if you can make it work. It's just the operations. Yeah. And Matt Jimenez will end with you uh, again growing set of cold brew coffees at Whole Foods. Um, how much more room do you guys have for that for the for our new entrance? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. Um, there's, there's really not that much more space, right? So a point, points of differentiation by way of uh, product attribution and uh, price value, obviously, are, are big hits for that. So uh, learning the white space and managing it is, is uh, increasingly important. Outstanding. Great feedback.